There are some people who are such that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them good news about two things. Maghfirah and ajr. Not just ajr, but ajrun azim. Great ajr. So, from Allah, if Allah just gives ajr on its own, that is enough. But alhamdulillah, this is a great statement here, a point that Allah is saying, ajrun azim, not just ajr. So the two rewards here with which the human being, his whole life, the life that Allah has given to us, the life that Allah has given to us, he spends his life for these two things. All his life, the effort, every worship action that Allah has given to the human being, whatever the human being implements, faraid actions, compulsory actions, all ibadat, worship, his objective is that the servant, he gets these two things. When he leaves this world, departs this world, then the ibadat that Allah Ta'ala instructed us to do, the worship, if he completes those actions in such a way that Allah, so I can get forgiveness, number one, I can be saved from the fire of hell, Allah will also forgive my sins, and I will get the highest rank in Jannah paradise. And the second objective, that Allah becomes so pleased with me, that Allah's rada, this is the reward of Allah's pleasure, may Allah be so happy with me that the rewards Allah Ta'ala has distributed that we all lifelong read in the Quran about, in the lectures, in speeches, we hear that such rewards, such jannas Allah Ta'ala has created, such rewards and luxuries Allah has set aside, about which Allah Ta'ala said that your mind and imagination cannot even reach near to thinking what is lying in store for you. Such magnificent things are waiting for the human being. 
And thereafter, that we can't even think about it. Our brains are not capable of thinking about it. That what houses they will be, what residences they will be, what playing areas they will be, what decorations they will be, what rivers they will be that Allah has mentioned regularly. Udkhulul jannata. Dakhulul jannah. Enter into jannah. Tahtul anhar. Beneath which rivers will flow. Khalidina fiha abada. Forever and ever more. Nobody will take it away from you. Nor will you have to pay tax on it. Nor any electricity bill will come. Nor will there be inheritance. No one will snatch anything from you. And when will you get this? Allah Ta'ala says, very soon the hisab will take place and you'll get this. So if Allah is saying soon, if Allah is saying soon, then tell me. The previous Ramadan went and it's like when we arrived to Ramadan, it's just like Ramadan didn't go. It didn't even go. Even now, that some example shows the time is passing fast that it's like last Thursday night went and it's like we're sitting again on Thursday night with speed Juma comes that we don't realize that the previous Juma went and the next one's come so quickly time passes so we should look inside ourselves analyze inside ourselves that we were young and we were kids then we went to school then madrasa then college it's like a dream if you look back in your life that how quickly all of these phases of life pass by so quickly that we'll get this in the hereafter allah Ta'ala says very soon i'll give to you an ajrun adim i'll give to you and it says such alcohols I'll give to you, such drinks there'll be, such food and delicacies and, and, and workers for you, and beautiful, beautiful wives you will have. And there'll be trees in Jannah, they'll have branches that they will give you clothes to wear, whatever attire you want, it will come off that branch and it will come to you for you to wear. Okay, there, there's no need to ask. Allah Ta'ala says, you won't be asked, you'll be desiring in hereafter. You won't ask for anything. In this world, you have to keep on asking dua, dua, dua. There's no dua there in the hereafter, in paradise. Here, you have to practice, there is reward. That's it. Here, you have to work hard, there is the luxury in the hereafter. Yes, we'll be used to it. We'll think that, I can't hear the adhan, I have to go to pray salah. Is it asr time now? I can't hear the azan, I can't hear the voice, the call to prayer. And the angels laugh and say, that they hear the brother is different. Come on, let's go to the bazaar. Come on, let's take you on a trip to the bazaar. They'll take you to the bazaar. When you come back from the marketplace and your wife, she'll see you and she'll fall more in love with you. That you're more handsome now when you come back. What did you do when you went to the marketplace? So these are the words to think and read about and hear about. Where have you gone? Where did you come from? You're so handsome more than before. So there'll be such bazaar and marketplaces and places that a person, will, his husn will increase in Jannah. With time, what days there will be, what nights there will be, you won't realize the difference. Enjoyment, beautiful transportation you will have in Jannah. Beautiful transportation. Wherever you want to go, you will have different places. Okay, let's go to my dad now. Let's see what's my dad doing. You'll think a transport will come, you'll sit on there and you'll float through the air to go and see your father. You know some people, they've seen in the dream these things. Allah, Allah shows the people of Allah these whilst they're here on, the, on earth. And they've even floated up and they've seen it in the dream. So, brothers, this is the reality. So about this the Quran tells us. Two things. Why do you waste your time in your life here on earth? 30 years old you are, 15 years old, 60 years old, 70 years old. Apart from eating chickens and how many potatoes and carrots and how much they cost. That's what we know. How expensive is flour? How much money is in the bank? What's our bank balance? Apart from this, we don't know anything. Yeah. We keep making doctors, oh, I've got blood pressure. Can I see the doctor, please? Can I go to the clinic, please? Can you please prescribe me this medicine? Yeah, keep eating this and this many times a day. Is this a life, my friends? The life we've got is a purpose, have an objective. We are people of belief, faith. When you wake up in the morning, you should have an objective for the day. What is your purpose for the day? That not what you were yesterday, you shouldn't be the same today. Yesterday what went, you were weak. Then today you should be more stronger and you should demonstrate 
improvement today. The food and drink, Allah says, I promise you, you'll get that. I'll give you paranta, sometimes eggs, sometimes dates. The, the food is to fill the stomach and the stomach never complains. Your stomach will never complain to you. Whatever you fill your stomach with, if you're hungry, if you give it carrots to eat, the stomach, if you give it carrots, it'll be quiet. I saw a little girl, she was hungry, I'm hungry, hungry, it's nothing to eat. Oh, give some carrots, they said to her, give her carrots. Yeah, carrots? And she had some carrots and she was happy and then she's playing, she's running around. Stomach's full. So the stomach will never complain to you. My Hazrat Sahib, my teacher said, May Allah Ta'ala elevate his status in Jannah very high. Yes, he said in his dialect that has, your, has he ever complained to you? Has he ever complained to you? You can have yogurt to eat, you can have little pieces, you can have chicken. The, does it know what's going into it? Yes, so Hazrat Sahib is saying that you know your stomach, it will never complain to you. Never criticize. They won't say to you amongst people that have, when you're sitting with people, they won't know have you had yogurt or chicken or whatever you've eaten. Somebody's had food, onions. Somebody's had honey. Somebody's had yogurt. So what is this? This is just a taste. It's an enjoyment that destroys a person. His desires. Your pakora, samosa, Ramadan. You can fill the stomach with water and two dates, isn't it? So, the, but until three samosas don't go in our stomach with chutney, we say, oh, I didn't enjoy the iftar, yaar. it wasn't enjoyable, it wasn't enjoyable. So this isn't the objective of life, the objective, the Quran tells us what the, what the objective is. Run, hasten, time is very short that you've got, the time is very short. Make yourself capable that what Allah says in the Quran, I'll give you ajr, not ajr, I'll give you azim ajr, not small jannah, high level jannah you will get. High level jannah. Don't look out for small jannah, then imagine what if, if the smile level in jannah, may Allah Ta'ala deliver all of us into jannah, inshallah. So for this, Allah Ta'ala says that there are two rewards. Run, run and get these rewards. Who can acquire these rewards, Allah? Allah says, who can get these rewards? إِلَّا الَّذِينَ صَبَرُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ This is Quran that's telling us. It's not the Gita I'm reading, it's the Quran that Allah Ta'ala revealed for us. Allah says, take the guidance from the Quran and attain these things in your life, physically. There's anything to be distressed about that after Allah tells us about two rewards, He's telling us the solution as well, how to get them. If Allah didn't tell us, then there's another problem. Allah is showing us the end point and the path to get there. Allah says, you don't have to run left and right. The path Allah prescribed to us, just follow that path. Follow that path. Don't follow your opinions. I'll do this today. I'll do that today. I'll do this worship today. I'll do that. Uh, brothers, the program, the schedule Allah has given, just follow that schedule. Follow that schedule. Very simple program of life Allah Ta'ala has given to us. Excellent program, an easy program. Allah knows that these human beings there have got wife, children, business, work, travel. So Allah doesn't give us a life schedule that will disturb your life. Allah doesn't want to disturb us. Allah knows that we are in society, this environment, we've got stomach, we have to pay the bills, we have to work, we have to put petrol in the car, we've got to buy a nice car. Allah knows all of these things. Allah is Qadr Mutlik, He's all powerful, He's controlling. So why are you scared, Allah says? Why do you fear? The program Allah has defined for us according to your status. Allah has told the human being that if you keep this schedule running, then you will acquire all the things you need. There will be no problems. Say Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So two rewards Allah said. What a great reward, maghfirah, forgiveness. And, and, and a high level of paradise. Ajrun Adeem, Jannatul Firdaus. Allah says, ask for this. Ask for this. For you have manufactured these things. Not for the angels have made this. Angels, they're standing there and they're saluting you. Marhaba, marhaba, welcome. Ahlan wa uh, You know, hello and easy they'll say to you. Ahlan wa sahlan. Please, welcome. That these human beings, we were desperate to see them. And these human beings, they used to be sat there in the dunya. They are the owners of paradise. They were expelled temporarily from Jannah. But really, they're Jannah, these the human beings. The angels know this. Our great, 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 fa great fa grandfather, Hazrat Adam alayhi salam, was Jannah. Our mother and father, they're related to Jannah. Paradise. Yes, just based on a test, a challenge, they were sent down to the earth. So we had to come down. Otherwise, we were people of Jannah already, originally, mashallah. So why are we here on the earth? 
Yeah, we are just temporary living here. Our situation is in paradise. Our father, our mother, they're from Jannah. That's where they come from. Is this the case or not? Tell me. Yeah? Me and you, our grandfather is one. He's just now here. Oh, he's from this country. He's from that tribe. He's from that continent. No, our father is Adam. Our mother is Hawa. Yes, we are the children of the Nabi. Say Subhanallah. We are the children of a Prophet. We are the awlad of a Nabi, brothers. Or are we not? Or are we not? If someone says, who are you? I'm the son of a Prophet. My great, great, great grandfather was a Prophet. He was the first Prophet. Is this the case or not? Tell me. Or are you children of other people? We are his children. Subhanallah. Look at the status of the human being. Eh? He's the child of a Prophet. So, Allah has told us the method, there are two things, acquire them while you're living here. How? How will you get this? إِلَّا لَذِينَ صَبَرُوا وَعَمْلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Now Allah is telling us the method. So first Allah talks about forgiveness and the high reward. Allah says, how will you get them? The first thing Allah says, إِلَّا لَذِينَ صَبَرُوا The first thing you need is sabr. And the second thing you need, those amal, those deeds, that Allah Ta'ala likes. وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Two things you need to do. To get the first two. Two things. Sabr وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ So firstly, what is sabr? That we need to get these two things. Sabr وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Do we need to get them or not? Tell me. For Jannah, for Paradise, and for Maghfirah, and for the high status, and for Allah's pleasure, that, and for, to see Allah in the hereafter, then we need to get these things done on, while we're living. So is anyone working hard to get sabr? Are we doing hard work? Oh, you prayed salah. Why you prayed salah? Oh, I just had to pray salah. Ramadan come, why are you fasting? Are you going to pray taraweeh? And we're going to read the Quran. Ramadan's gone, no servant of Allah. What's the objective? Why are you doing all of these things? Why are you doing these? There must be some objective behind it, some purpose. You must be getting something for this. So Allah says, attain this how? Through sabr, number one. What is sabr? Yes, it's a complete subject in our deen is sabr. Complete subject. Look, we come to this world, we live in this world, so Allah has given us circumstances and different environments that we're living in. Sometimes we're up, sometimes we're down. Sometimes we're happy, sometimes we're sad. Sometimes we're sick, sometimes we're healthy. Sometimes you're distressed, sometimes you're rejoicing. Happy. So in other words, it's a rolling, sort of moving system. And this is our test. Say subhanallah. This is the test. And through these tests, you have to earn paradise. If, for example, somebody is totally fit, he's never sick, and he, and he wants Jannah, Allah says, what will you get Jannah for? What effort have you made on the earth? Jannah is for those people who get through the challenges and the tests and they pass the test. They pass the test. This is the part of life for us. This is worship. Being sick is ibadah, being healthy is worship, being rich is worship, being poor is worship. All of these are worship actions. Being distressed is a high level worship. To go to look after someone is worship. To persevere is worship. To have a loss is worship. To have a loss is worship. These are all examples of high level worship. After these actions of worship, we will get the result that will give us Allah's pleasure and it will give us reward. And what is that? Sabr is the end point. Sabr. You follow what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? Sabr. Sabr is acquired after ibadah and the worship is for example you're sick or you're distressed or you're upset or your poverty life or you're poor or someone's passed away or you're crying, sometimes you're laughing. When all these circumstances come, a person is passing through high level worship at that time. High level worship. We don't consider it worship. We, these examples I'm giving you are the worship examples that will give you paradise. Otherwise, can you guarantee that your salah will give you jannah? Can you guarantee that your prayer, do you think our prayers are deserved? This is Allah's karam, that we come, Allah Ta'ala orders us and we pray. Yes, salah is a great action. Salah was, is the miraj of the believer. Salah, namaz, that as soon as a Muslim does sajda, he starts to meet Allah. That's miraj. He's meeting Allah. We don't even know when we prayed, what verse did I pray, what did Mulana Sa pray, what was the meaning of that verse, what did I pray in the first verse, etc. This is Allah's order. Alhamdulillah, it's a great treasure, Allah's allowing us to pray salah. Allah's elevating our status. Great, great point. 
But salah that we need to pray that can give us this result, we don't have that salah in our lives, unfortunately. This is just us implementing Allah's instruction that we pray salah. Yes, that the salah to get these rewards is something else. It's on a different level. So the biggest ibadah is sabr. Sabr. Subhanallah. So when a human being is distressed, the Quran tells us this now. This is the verse of the Quran already. Uh, I can't remember the name of the surah, the chapter. So Allah says, my servant, I sent you on earth. Sometimes you're in this circumstance, sometimes in this circumstance. Ups and downs. Allah says, what do I do with the human being? I give him a difficulty. I take something from him. If I gave him a treasure or a gift, Allah says, I take it back. Because I'm the khalik, I'm the creator, I'm the controller. The thief came and he took his goods or an earthquake came and destroyed his home, his belongings. He had stock and it would disappear. You heard, oh, you know, I tried hard this year. I've got debt, so much debt. So my business is not running. I tried so hard. You hear these stories, isn't it, in the dunya? People claim sometimes you're on the height, sometimes you're really low financially. So Allah says, when I gave him the, the difficult circumstances and I took something away from him, then what did my servant do? He became ungrateful. He became ungrateful. He started to criticize and complain to Allah. He started to talk rubbish. He started to complain to Allah amongst the people, the public. And he started to criticize ibadah, worship. And he criticized salah. And he went against Allah. Oh, look at this man. What's happened to me? Is it me that was left for this punishment and difficulties I'm getting? Why is it just with me? I'm always um, suffering. Why is it just me? Nonsense he starts to speak, the person. Allah says, look at this person. Okay, so this is one circumstance that suddenly becomes ungrateful and he starts to complain to Allah, make a fuss to Allah, criticize Allah. And he doesn't know, he doesn't know why it's happened to him. So Allah says, sometimes it happens that I give him the ni'mas, the treasures and gifts. This is also ibadah. So through these examples, Allah says, when I give you a ni'mah, then what does he do? He gets big-headed then. He gets big-headed and proud. Oh, two houses, three houses, two cars, four cars. It becomes big-headed. Pride, look, it's me. I worked hard, I'm clever, I'm professional. And he's showing off to people. This is the fitrah, the nature of insan that Allah is defining here. So what should really happen in both circumstances, both examples, is this was the real test for that individual. So Allah says, when I take something from you, subhanallah, that, or if you have lots of riches and luxuries, then you should have been suf have sabr at that time. And if I give you lots of luxuries and comforts, then you should have shukr at that time. You should be grateful. So to test you, Allah says, I put you in this situation. Say, subhanallah. This is my hikmah, my wisdom, Allah says. The real hikmah, Allah says, this was my hikmah. That when I took things away from him, rather than complaining and criticizing, what should he do? What should he have done? He should have demonstrated sabr at that time. Sabr. Yeah, and what is sabr now? Now you'll understand. So if he had sabr at that time, sabr is that he would say that Allah gave it to me, Allah took it back, no problem. No problem. And this is Allah's hikmah, Allah's wisdom. Allah's hikmah, Allah's wisdom, whatever he did, he did that good and this is also good. Before was good, and now is also good. So mustaqil, he has a continuous mindset that he doesn't get afraid if something's taken away from him, or if he gets more. Okay, Allah gave it to me, it wasn't in my destiny, no problem, Allah will return it to me. He doesn't complain, he doesn't talk nonsense, he doesn't go towards haram, he doesn't do wrong actions to try and get back what he's lost. If it's a minor thing, we start to take interest, we run to the bank, we take our interest and we start to eat haram, or spread haram. The where shall I eat from, where will I earn from, we start worrying. At least have sabr for a little while. Think for a moment, there's your Rabb, is a creator who has promised that if I've given you distress or difficulty or issues, this is not to make you distress, so that I want to drag you to the high maqam, Allah says, so you can get ajr, reward and maqfira and forgiveness. 
Why? Because Allah says, I know. I know the worship that I've given to you. Through worship, you cannot attain the high ranks. You won't be able to get the rewards in the right because you're not doing ibadah worship in a good way. So say subhanallah. So to get to the high level, maqam, you're not worshipping properly that it will take you to a high level spiritually that you'll get the rewards from Allah. Allah says it's not your standard, the way you practice, the way you pray, the way you worship, it's not on the right level. So Allah says that the, the high level worship that meets, uh, connects Allah and His servant is salah. Salah is such a great action and worship. Allah says that when my servant prays salah, it's like sum. That he says, Allahu Akbar, finished, I'm detached from the world now, Allah, I'm not in the world anymore. That's why he puts his hands to his ears. When he puts his hands to his ears, yeah, you know like when you put somebody unconscious to do the operation, they inject the anesthetic, you say, okay, are you okay? They're talking to him in the air, and they know he's gone unconscious. Okay, cut his stomach, cut his leg, and take his heart out, and they're talking to him, and the heart comes out, he's on the side, and the doctor's gone off to drink tea. What does he know that human being, that his heart's out? They're operating on him. He's unconscious because the injection, the anesthetic has been given to him. So for the moment, the injection, the anesthetic, he's upset, distressed. He does wuzu, Allahu Akbar. And he puts the dunya behind him. Cut his leg, his heart, whatever. He doesn't know because he's in sajda. Subhanallah. And we, we don't even know if the man next to us is sort of just budging us. Yaar, stand straight. Why are you pushing me in salah? We're even aware of what the person next to us is doing. We're not even aware of what's happening in salah. Oh, get to the side, yaar. Oh, your socks are dirty. We keep complaining during salah to the next person. But in salah, we shouldn't even know. They say, announced, you're in the row, Allahu Akbar. You say, you're detached from the dunya. And you know that what's happening here, Allah says in front of you is the Kaaba and you've gone. You're spiritually gone when you're praying salah. That he, uh, this is the Kaaba is there, Multazim, he thinks I'm standing in front of Multazim. And Muqam Ibrahim, the Muslim is there when he's praying. Totally 100% who's praying Salah correctly, this is what he's contemplating. Some walis of Allah you will have heard, they were, you are just prayed Salah there. Really their souls arrived there. Really, their bodies here physically, but their ruh arrives there because they've said, Allahu Akbar, detached from the dunya. Disobey, no dunya, no shop, no business, no wife, no children. Totally detached from the dunya. Why? Because Allah, I am not in this world now. I'm in the spiritual world now, Allah, because I'm praying to you. That's how we should feel. Where was Miraj? The Holy Prophet said, where did he do Miraj? In the heavens. The same human being, Allah Ta'ala delivers his ruh, his soul to the heavens when he's praying. Yes, does anyone pray salah like this? Anyone today pray like this? All our business is running in salah. The accounts, I've got to pay this much money. Allah Akbar, sajda, I've got to do this action. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Let's get back to the shop, the stock. I've done all my planning during salah. Everything's fine now. Come on, that's the salah that we do for Allah. So Allah knew that the human being won't pray the salah as he should. So let's give him some other challenges in life. Somebody make him poverty ridden, give him wealth. Always keeping him troubles and challenges so that he keeps having sabr and he's grateful. Sometimes sabr, sometimes grateful so that his rank can be increased continuously through his life. Subhanallah. Say subhanallah. You understand what I'm saying, my brethren? Yes, good, very good. So this is what Allah Ta'ala is saying today. That two things you need to do. You have sabr, when you acquire sabr, and your nature becomes accustomed to sabr. Oh, everything's gone, you've lost everything. No problem, Allahu Akbar. He says that easily. He smiles, Allah, Allah is his, he's taking it back, he'll give it to me again. I didn't bring it with me into the world, Allah will give it to me again. Subhanallah, this emotion is a great emotion to bring into your life. What a great life. With ease you will go to sleep in the night when you think like this. He doesn't care, that person. Why? Because only that is going to happen what Allah Ta'ala destined. Whatever Allah wants to happen, that's what's going to happen. It's impossible what will happen is just what you want to happen. You will try your best, full 100% effort. Allah says, even then the conclusion will be what I want. Allah says, it's better. Allah says, you assign over to me the controller. Then I'll also give to you what you want as well on top. Subhanallah. So this equals sabr. This equals sabr. This is the definition of how easy the life becomes. All the distress is gone. I'm sick. What am I going to do now? Grappling, spreading your arms. No problem. Allah says, so if I've got ill health, oh Allah, I've got pain in my leg, I've got pain here, then Allah will inshallah solve your pain. 
Yeah? So why do you run around to the dunya complaining to people? If you want to make noise, then go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wake up at the hajjud, go into sajda, Allah, please correct my knee or my stomach. I've got issues, Allah will solve it for you. That's just how I walk around in the world. That will do this, cut this. Thousands of requests come. Doctor says, cut this, do this operation, procedure. I say, let it happen. I'm fine. I'm, I'm okay at the moment. Until now, I'm still moving, isn't it? I'm still moving. Yes, 10 times I've cancelled my operation in the past. Hospital said that we're, we're not going to send you any letters anymore. I said, Alhamdulillah, I don't want it. Because they keep sending the letters, keep sending the letters. So I stopped. So good thing. I said, no, I'm saying do that. You should use the resources medically. I'm not saying to you do that. I'm just giving you my example. Definitely have operations. But I said, I don't want it. That's my choice. That's my preference. What I'm trying to say is, that at least ask Allah, your Rabb, your Creator first, then He decides what you need. That your leg, does it need an operation? Does it need a procedure? When Allah Ta'ala allows that procedure to happen, then there'll be no pain at all. That, that at least Allah, I'm grateful to you. Allah say, yes, give Him the solution. Give Him the easy solution. Do you understand what I'm saying? So your encouragement and your positivity increases. What do you get? Allah Ta'ala said a great thing, مَغْفِرَةٌ وَعَجْرٌ عَظِيمٌ If you have sabr, the doors of paradise open for you. Keep your salah to the back. Allah says, come forward. Why? It's announced. Allah Ta'ala, the angels say, who is he? Allah will say, go, go, go into paradise. The doors open for you. Angels will say, come here, come here. Where are you going? Yes, show the book of your deeds. They'll say, no, we are the people of sabr. Who are you to stop us, angels? We had sabr in the world. This is how the people of Sabr were going to paradise. So brothers, the angels will say, where are you going? Where have you come from? This is Jannah. They said, we've come from planet earth. We were the people of Sabr. They said, oh, okay, okay, go, go, go. Go into paradise. In Allah ma sabirin. Allah announced in the world, in Allah ma sabirin, I'm with the people who demonstrate Sabr. Allah says, who are the angels to stop you going to paradise? These are the people of Sabr, whose tawakkal, their trust and reliance on Allah increases. And when you get Sabr, Patience, endurance, then wa'amlu salah, then your salah starts to develop as well. Then your namaz becomes complete. Then on this maqam, when you have demonstrated sabr, then the true colors come into your salah. Before it was just physical practice, before it was bare salah, empty. But then you had sabr, then your salah becomes amlu salihad, become an excellent action which Allah Ta'ala accepts then. At the moment it's just physical practice. Moving around, but then it becomes amalus salihat, righteous, pious deed. Because your emotions, your circumstances that you went through, the challenges, then the person who has left everything to Allah, who trusts in Allah completely. Do you understand the second point now? Shall we continue? Yes, because I haven't finished yet. Wherever I brought you to now, what we discussed in the moment, two rewards I spoke about. So the two rewards, I told you the method to get these rewards, sabr. Yes, sabr. So the third point now, so how will sabr come into our life? Now? Yes, and ask this to me then. Isn't it? The how do we bring sabr into our life? Now? Yes, so well, how will sabr come? So we understood we want the reward, we want forgiveness. To get these two things, we need sabr. So how do we bring sabr? My brother, sabr is an emotion, it's a condition. Say subhanallah. Yeah, sabr is an emotion. It's in a condition. You can't get sabr from a shop. You can't order it. You can't get it from books. You can't get it from anywhere. Sabr. So where will you get sabr from? So what will you need to do to acquire sabr in your life? Subhanallah, where do we learn patience, endurance, perseverance? Sabr you acquire this condition, it's, a, it's an emotion, it's a feeling, it's a hal. It is created within a person, within a person. Yes, an emotion, a thinking, a mindset. How? How do you acquire it? Sabr that will be developed, the emotion that we develop, what's the worship to get that? What is the method? What's the path? There's only one path to acquire sabr. That's it, just one path, one way. And what is that? Muhabbat, the path of muhabbat, the path of love. Which path? The path of love, muhabbat. Muhabbat. Look, so I'll explain this to you. So we say that what is your deen? We ask each other, 
what is your deen? My deen is Islam. That's correct, isn't it? My deen is Islam. But this deen or Islam, what is the real name, the root of it that comes out? It, the essence of Islam is what? deen e muhabbat In reality, is the deen of love. What is this? The deen of Islam equals the deen e muhabbat Our deen is muhabbat Our religion, totally, completely, our deen is based and dependent and existent on what? On love. On love. The whole deen and path and way is based on love. Deen Islam equals love. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our Rabb, our creator. He stated this hadith Qudsi, oh my servant, I love you. Allah says this hadith Qudsi. What a great statement Allah is saying. So, has it started? Where does it start from? Muhabbat, love. Allah Ta'ala says, My servant, I love you. Hadith Qudsi. And this love, this is the, the madhab, the religion of love that we are involved in. Yes, it's love that Allah Ta'ala has demonstrated to us. Allah has announced in Hadith Qudsi, Oh my servant, I love you. Allah said it clearly in front of us. Openly. So when Allah says that He loves us, then you know Allah's love. What is Allah's love? Imagine. That love due to that love we are saved today. Otherwise Allah has shown us a scene. That where I've sent to you in the world, in reality, I should have done what I should have done to you. I'll show you, Allah says. That I gave the example of Adam alayhi salam already. That he didn't commit a sin. He just did an action. It wasn't a sin. The definition is that a mistake, you could say, an, an error, or an example for us mankind. Allah said, how did this occur? How did this occur? How did this happen by you, O Adam? How did you do this? The Jannah's libas attire was taken off, the crown of paradise was taken off, the dress was taken off, everything was finished. Adam alayhi salam. The Prophet. And he had to wear leaves to cover him. Then Allah said, you're not staying here. Go. What was the punishment? Go down into planet earth. What's the hint here? Hint. Allah says, my disobey. How can one dare to disobey me in the world? Allah says. How can a person dare? And Allah showed the effect of a minor, minor. Allah says, oh you human being. How can you stand on planet earth and you disobey me? I say to you, praise Allah, you listen to music. I tell you, keep your eyes down and you want to look at women and girls. Allah says, I said, how dare you listen to music and you listen to the dol, dol kiyam. All the things that Allah SWT is prohibiting us, openly, blatantly we're doing them. And we are living in the world, why? Because Allah's love has overwhelmed His punishment. That's why. Otherwise the situation would be different. Allah says, this is the situation, I give you a hint already. An example, our wujud, our body would never stay existent. We would be totally moved to dust in this dunya. The amount that human being disobeys Allah, he's still alive in the world. Even then Allah has given him food and water and bread and clothes to wear. Don't say bad what I'm saying, but make a list morning to the evening that today, Allah, how many times did I disobey you? My whole body, Allah, you give to me eyes. I am not grateful to you. Allah, you give me my nose. You give me ears. I disobey. You give me hands. I sinned. Allah, if you take within a minute, Allah could take all these things. Look, brain hemorrhage. Oh, he's gone. Finished. He's died. He's alive. He's breathing. But he's gone. Why? Because every part of the body Allah has given to us. And it demands every limb and organ that be grateful to your creator. One tooth of yours, if it breaks, then you suddenly realize if there's a pain in your bottom jaw tooth, though you're crying, if there's an earache, you can't work all night long, you're crying. If your nose is blocked, you can't breathe. Yes, you'll get the uh, oxygen, oxygen, put oxygen in. If your heart stops, that's it, you're struggling. Yeah, in other words, a person, even a small insect has the, 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 even for example, a toy, at least it's got the battery inside it and it's got some energy in life. But we have no guarantee. We have no stability, no guarantee of no balance in life. Yes, because Allah has made us like this. Allah is in control. Allah says, my love, I've said it to you already. I love you. That's why I give you the chance. Do you understand what I'm saying? 
You understand what I'm saying? Allah says, the deen I gave to you, Islam, that's the deen of love. And the path, the person who comes to me, to my nearness, will come due to love. And whoever does ibadah, also he'll do ibadah with love. Worship with love. Whatever action you do with the love, then Allah says that becomes a fantastic thing. I'll tell you a true story in Pakistan. There was a person at a very small shop. You know like people have like the pendus in the village, in the wilderness, he had a shop, little shop, and he died, the shopkeeper. In true story, he passed away, and from his grave there was a beautiful fragrance emanating from his grave. People were surprised, what's going on here? That he was a pendu, illiterate, and he used to pray salah. He wasn't a wali Allah, or kutub, special man. Why is there a beautiful smell coming from his grave? People are smelling that when they go past his grave in the graveyard. They could smell the beautiful, and the, the ulema, the scholars, they said, let's go to his house and ask. The, what was this man? What actions did he do? And was he a wali Allah, friend of Allah? And his wife was a bit distressed. Um, she said he used to pray salah. And his wife said, yes, yeah, there's one thing I can say to you that he did. One thing that I used to see my husband. What was that? She said, he loved so much the Qur'an. Now the love comes here. Yes, Allah says, my whole deen is Qur'an. My whole deen is Qur'an. One is salah, one is salah, and one is salah with love. One is praying salah, and one is having love for salah. Subhanallah. Now you understand what I'm saying? So she said that he used to love the Qur'an so much, my husband. Is it? She, they said, what love did he have? She said, we used to see every day when he'd come back from the shop, he used to have a bath. And after having a bath, he used to take the Qur'an, he used to kiss the Qur'an. Then he'd say to the Qur'an, that I'm illiterate, I don't even know you, but I just tell you that this is Allah's kitab. Then he'd kiss the Qur'an again, then he said, we used to see him. Then he used to cry, and then with his finger, he used to move on the lines, Allah, the orders you've given me to in the Qur'an, they are truth. They're the truth. Half an hour, 45 minutes every day he used to do this. He used to cry, kiss the Quran, and put it, and we saw him do this every day. They said, this is his love, his worship that Allah Ta'ala accepted. Subhanallah. He didn't know tajweed, he didn't know the rules of Quran, he didn't know any sabak, he didn't know qirat, he didn't know recitation, he hadn't studied. But he had love for the Quran. <coughs> he demonstrated that. Yes, a deen equals love. Our deen equals love. Everything you do, all actions drag you towards love. Allah has announced that I love you. And the mu'min, Allah says, إِلَّا لَذِينَ أَمْنُوا أَشَدُّ أَحُبَّ اللَّهِ Though Allah, we also love you for everything we love you. أَشَدُّ إِلَّا اللَّهِ That Allah deeply, deeply we love you, Allah, we love you immensely. That is the mu'min, the believer. This is the path. Yes, Allah's Nabi Sallallahu said that he is mine, who his wife, his life, his family, his everything in the dunya, he'll sacrifice for the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is the true worshiper, the true believer. So why Ibadah is coming? Allah says love. The servant says love. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying love. Subhanallah. All Ibadat worship dependent on love. So it's announced here clearly that if you a human being, if you want to attain the rewards, what rewards did we say in the beginning? Ajr, the, the high level reward in the hereafter, and maghfirat, forgiveness. Then there's only one path. What is that path? That you should love Allah Ta'ala says, that's it. Love, become the human being of love. Inside you, you should develop love. Total hub. So muhabbat will open the path for you, the ease for you. The solution for you. You don't understand what I'm saying? Yes, this is what we're lacking today. This is what we're lacking today. This is the one thing we're lacking. We all do everything. But we don't do it with love. Not with the love. We need love inside us, deep. The servant, if he loves immensely, deeply he loves, deeply, within. What does this mean? When a person loves deeply, then sabr will come into him, subhanallah. Then what sabr will come? Then sabr Husseini will come into him. Yes, that muqam. As Imam Hussein, what was his example of sabr? Sabr he had. Yes. Whatever he said goes, let it go. Muhabbat is such a thing, love. 
Love is such a thing that if a person is true love, he doesn't think what's gone or what's come. He doesn't care. When he's got love, then his hisab kitab is gone. Whatever's gone is dissipated, he's happy. Whatever's come, he's happy. Because he's got the assistance of love with him. Yes, love teaches us this. Yeah, this is his test. When you have true love that you develop within you, then what does that create within you? Sabr comes within you. And then you get that emotion and condition in your life. You understand what I'm saying now? Yes. So, whenever you, as soon as you get love, suddenly your love for Allah increases, then whatever comes from Allah, you say, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Muhabbat will never allow you to criticize or complain. Love. Love will never even allow you to think about complaining. Rather, you'll be ashamed in complaining once you've got love in your life, inside your heart. Remember, the lover never complains to the person who he loves. The person, the beloved, never complains to the person. Complaints always come where there's no love between. Where there's no love in between. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. So this in reality is what we're lacking. That inside us, within us, there's no love, no muhabbat, there's a drama, it's fake. So if we don't have love, then just complaining, making a fuss, doubts, and haram, and grappling, and worrying about dunya. But when a person trusts in Allah, relies in Allah, then everything, whether he's got difficulty, distress, or sorrow, something's going, he's got a test, he says, this is Allah's wisdom, whatever's happening, Allah knows best. Allah, this is what should happen, because Allah Ta'ala ordained it. So these two muqam, to attain these, what a human being needs to do, he needs love, muhabbat. Allah's muhabbat, the love of Allah, the love for the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Shall we go now, next step? So you understand we need love? Next step, yeah? Okay, so now you'll ask, where do we get love from? Subhanallah. Where do we get love from? True love. The human being needs to develop love. Where do we get love from now? I'm just following in a sequence so you can follow the sequence. So that you can practice this lesson of today. It's not a speech I'm giving today. It's not a lecture. I say, Alhamdulillah, we can all become people of Jannah and become real Muslims. Real Muslims. That's the objective. So this is the love that we need. You, Allah, I want muhabbat. So if muhabbat comes to me, then I can practice. If love comes inside me, then sabr will come in. If sabr comes inside me, then tawakkal, reliance, and Allah will come inside me. And we'll start to understand Allah Ta'ala's words and His instructions. Because we'll become so close to Allah that everything Allah says, we'll say, Allah subhanAllah, amazing, excellent Allah. In other words, we'll be included in Allah Ta'ala's deen. This is called tajalliyate af'aliya in tasawwuf. This is the level of tajalliyate af'aliya that he is drowning in Allah's magnificence at that time. Allah's splendor. This is a level of naqshbandi uh, silsila order, a lesson that comes. Maqami. Tajalliyate af'aliya. That, that tajalli of Allah, Allah's splendor that creates all uh, af'al, that all the actions that are happening in the world. Someone's dying, alive, someone's rage, somebody's for These are all af'al. Circumstances. These are all examples of Allah's splendor that come from Allah. I'm explaining to you now the rules of tasawwuf, principles of tasawwuf. So when this tajalli comes into the heart of the human being, which is called Latifa Kalb, that we do dhikrullah, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. So when the Naqshbandi student does dhikr of Allah on his heart, then his heart becomes clean. When the heart becomes clean, then he, reaches, he meets his asal. This is dhikr that I'm explaining to you, the dhikr that we do. So first step, in Naqshbandi, Sheikh, you go to, then he cleans your heart first. He puts the finger on the heart, with Allah's blessed name, he will open the heart. When the heart opens, then where does the heart go? Then we come out from the world of physical world to the spiritual world a person reaches. And in the spiritual world, then his aqidah, his belief, he has an emotion, that all the af'al, all the conditions that are coming from Allah, all the circumstances, all the work in the dunya, all the things happening, this is the tajilli of Allah, this is the glory of Allah. Kullu alayhi shan. The all shan come from Allah, glory. So when Allah shan, his glory descends, then the human being who on his heart, has worked hard, made effort, and due to Allah's name is open, then Allah's afal, tajalli, splendor comes to his heart. Magnificence of Allah. Do you understand the sabuf? 
So this is called Sufism. Sufism is an loudly swaying here and there. This is a subject of Islam that connects a Muslim to Allah. That's the Sawwuf. Yes, the door of his heart opens. And then he starts to experience things and observe things. Then he is understanding and he sees with his eyes and he understands that why is this happening? Why did Allah uh, ordain this? Why was this in my destiny? Why did this happen? So he understands that the jali of Allah, the actions, the circumstances, like Alhamdulillah, and he gets confidence and tawakkal reliance in Allah that he has no worry about the dunya, no concern about the dunya. Then will he get depressed, that Muslim? Will that person get depression? Will he take tranquilizers or sleeping tablets? Will he? Does he need these things? Don't you enjoy what you're hearing? If that emotion was to then come in your life, then ama- amazing, imagine, do dhikr of Allah to God. this. Every action we do is for an objective. It's for a reason. So when the human being develops the uh, sabr and comes onto the level of tawakkal, reliance in Allah, love comes, sabr will come. When sabr comes, alias tajaliyat of aliyah comes into that person. What is that? Then tawakkal comes, the reliance in Allah in reality. Then he understands everything in his life is Allah's hikmah and wisdom. Always he's happy with Allah, no complaints. This is Allah's wisdom and decision. And the believer is happy like he should be. Because Allah wants to give me a maqam, Allah wants to give me a level. A minor, I was young, my mother died, my father died, they left me. Then he thinks, this was all Allah's wisdom. It was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to make me do an action. Allah wanted to give me sabr and give me the high maqam, the high levels. And in my life, during my lifetime, Allah wanted to give me the rewards. Do you understand what I'm saying? So every feeling and emotion in life, he's happy with Allah. When he has muhabbat inside him. Muhabbat. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now is left the question, where do we get muhabbat from? Love. Oh, you probably understood this by now. Oh, you didn't understand by now. Yes. Muhabbat, where do we get that from? Allah says, muhabbat, love you will acquire when you go to that person who already loves me. This is a great dua of the Prophet ﷺ. That if you want to acquire love, then go to the person who already loves Allah. If you say, Allah, I want love for you, Allah. Allah says, you want my love? Then go to that man who already loves me and I love him also. Allah says, I've announced already I love him. So when you go to the person who loves me and you love him and you sit with him in his company, then you will get my love, Allah says. SubhanAllah. So this is love, what it is. How to acquire it. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the whole universe, the, I'll tell you the, the example of the, the love, the greatest example of love in the universe. The go to him who already loves me, Allah Ta'ala says. So Allah has defined the path to acquire love. Go to the person's company who already loves me, Allah says. Okay. When you go to his company, Allah says, then what will happen? Subhanallah. When you go to his company, the person already loves me, Allah says, then what will happen is that you will love him and he will love you. Mutual exchange. As I said to you, the whole world is existent on love. If you take love out, then the world deflates to nothing. It's like a puncture. Fasting, salah, everything is based on love. I'll give you small examples along the way. So when you go to that individual, Allah says, who already loves me, who already on a high level, then he'll love you and you'll love him. Mutual exchange. And then two beautiful now, Ashiks and Mushuks, I'll tell you examples. Yes, I will tell you the example of the Sheikh and the student who loved each other. You cannot get the ex- equivalence of these examples. Who were they? Hazrat Muad ibn Jabal radiyallahu the great companion, and Imam al Sayyid al Mursaleen, the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He was the teacher, and so all the Sahaba. But this contract where they stood in front of each other, and the Prophet did this with one of his companions. Who was that? Hazrat Muad ibn Jabal radiyallahu anhu. May Allah be pleased with him. Great companion, great Sabi. This was the time when they were about to be departed from each other, and. This is where the love was demonstrated. The Holy Prophet ﷺ was stood in front of him and he said, Oh Mu'ad, Mu'ad was in front of him. As Mu'ad was in front of him. Al-Imam Bulambiya, the head of the Prophet, and the Prophet ﷺ said, Oh Mu'ad, my companion, I love you. He said this in these words. SubhanAllah, the universe shook. That my, when I hear this hadith, my body starts to shake. Imagine the scene. 
Yeah, the Prophet some did say Sadiq to Umar to Ali. This statement direct, he must have said it to Sadiq, but he said to Sadiq about whatever's in my heart, I've put into your heart. But this statement to clearly announce it, oh Muad, my companion, imagine what Muad was. And he said, Oh Muad, I love you. The Prophet said. And Muad shook, he said, Oh Prophet of Allah, I also love you the same. Subhanallah. Allah's Nabi some said. Then he turned his face to one side. He said, Muad, maybe after today I will not be able to see you. And then he's crying, the Prophet is crying, and Muad is crying. Subhanallah. When he was being sent on the assignment. So this is the example of the love between the Shaykh and the student. The Shaykh was the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, and the Murid, the student was Muad ibn Jabal. So when they love each other, when the student and the teacher love each other like this, when the love is exchanged, Allah says, if you love for my sake, then listen to the hadith. And who is given us hadith? Has a Muad ibn Jabal is now narrating this hadith. That what does Allah Ta'ala say then? Do you understand these points I'm telling you? It's not hard to understand what I'm saying, is it? Or then listen to this again afterwards so you understand the points. You have, you have to practice on this. With this tartib, the way I've explained to you, you need to practice on it. Yes. So Hazrat Muad bin Jabal Radhiunu narrates a hadith in Mishkat. May Allah be pleased with me. He said, the Holy Prophet Wasallam said, a unique hadith this is. That Allah Ta'ala has announced that when two human beings, like me and you, or two any people, when two individuals, have love for each other. For whose sake? For Allah's sake. Subhanallah. Yes, there are many types of love in the world, but they all break. Oh, yeah, let's do business together. And then it breaks. Oh, yeah, let's get married, husband, wife, but it breaks. Unfortunately, mother and father relationship breaks. All relationships break. But one relationship does not break in which love is existent. That will never break. Love. Until Qiyamah it will not change. Rather another deed I've told you before in previous days. It's a guarantee Allah has given that until Qiyamah. On, after the day of judgment, he will be with that person who he loves. Subhanallah. This is love. This is love. Uh, even after the day of judgment, you'll be together. Yes, in Nabiin wa Siddiqeen wa Shuhada wa Salihin wa Husna wa Hasna Ulaika Rafika. This is in the Quran, isn't it? You will be with that person. The Nabiyeen. If you love the Nabi, you'll be with the Nabi. If you love Siddiq, you'll be with Siddiq. If you love the Salihin, you'll be with the Salihin. With the Shuhada, the martyrs, you'll be with the martyrs. Whoever you love, you will be with that person in the hereafter. Subhanallah. The Ashik become the lover though, the, become the lover of Allah and His Rasul. Why do you live a drama life? Man nahabba sunnati fa man nahabba ni, the Prophet said in Hadith. Why do you give empty claims of my love? I've told you the definition. Go and love my sunnah, then I will love you, said the Prophet. Is this not Hadith? That you lie, you are hypocrites, as the Prophet said. You do haram actions against the Prophet, and you want his, you khadiunullah, and you joke and jest with the deen, you mock the deen. Are you not ashamed? Are we not ashamed for taka, for pounds and currency? We say we are lovers of the Prophet ﷺ. Have you ever passed the test? Have you ever worn the dress like the Prophet ﷺ? The Prophet of Allah wore the turban. Did you ever have that intention? That I'll do the same. And the Prophet ﷺ used to adorn himself and look beautiful and the olive oil and the surma and the, his sunnah examples. Do you ever follow them? Do you ever wear the dhoti and the sheet like he used to wear it? This is Islam. This equals Islam, my brothers. There's no other deen. Wherever you get this deen, then you understand that that's where you get the love of Allah, where you learn this deen. Then we're imitating this person, imitating that person. The whole masjid is full of those people who are following and observing the way of those who are against the same libas, the same dress. Juma Eid, at least have some decency and teach yourself and your children. Is this the deen that we're teaching? Is this, does this equal Islam? And we're praying salah. What salah are you praying? You are leaving the Nabi. Can you leave the Prophet Sallallahu example and pray Salah? Man talaka sunnati. Allah says that whoever has left my sunnah, I have no connection with that person. I have no connection. Do you have any basis of life? Do you have any role model and ideal in life? And sometimes this topi, sometimes this face, sometimes this color, this attire, just have one color. Sibqatullah wa ma'asan. There's no color greater than the sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu that's the greatest example. We are hypocrites. We are liars. Day and night we clash with the Quran. 
We reject the Quran. So be ayy Allah Rabbi Kumat Gawan Allah says they lie, they reject everything. Ramadan you reject, fasting you reject, Quran you reject. Small, small functions. We say we are Ashiks of Rasul Salam. The Ashiks were the great people who came before us. Ask them their example. We are lying, fraud. Four hairs we can't grow on our chin. Even then we look ten times in the mirror. Oh, do I look bad? Or does this bed look bad? Tell me, Yad. How shall I shape it? Will my wife say if I grow this? She'll say, are you beautiful? Are you not handsome? Imagine. Imagine. Allah's Nabi said, keep this face. Keep your mouth like this. Wear clothes like this. And clearly he's told us five times. Allah tells us, اِهْدِنَا السِّرَاطِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ سِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنَمْتَ عَلَيْمْ غَيْرِ الْمَقْدُوبِ لَيْمْ وَلَدْ دَالِينَ We say this in salam. Our face shouldn't be like that. Our dress shouldn't be like that. Our lifestyle shouldn't be like that. We are totally unique and different. They have their lives. We have our lives. We don't have no enmity with nobody. We have no enmity with anybody. We have our own lifestyle. Our trend, our iman, our deen tells us to practice like this. So we practice like this. We are not giving anyone pain. We don't criticize anyone. We're not enemies with anyone. We're not uh, pesting anyone. We're not going against anybody, opposing anybody. No. But we have our lifestyle. We have iman. And our belief allows and demands that our amal should be like this. We should look like this. We should practice like this. Allah has given us a role model. And Allah said, He's the greatest example. Follow Him footstep by footstep, the, the Prophet that I sent to you. Says when we wear the turban, we start shaking our legs. Big shake, all of these, they'll start, they can't even wear dhoti, their legs start shaking, trembling. They don't want to wear imam or dhoti. They just want to listen to speeches and conferences, just listen to words and that's it. Such shoes will be thrown on us in the hereafter, remember this. Such shoes will be thrown on us. The Quran, Allah said it not once. Thousands of pages. Atiullah with your Rasul. Atiullah with your Rasul. Obey Allah, obey the Rasul. Obey Allah, imitate, follow the Prophet. The whole Quran is full of these verses. Not one page. The obey my Prophet, imitate my Prophet, follow his lifestyle. No, 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 no need. Oh, no, no, no. People will be upset with me. People will be upset with me. I can't do that. Too hard. My brothers, what deen are we following in our lives? Do you don't understand what I'm saying? Nifaq, hypocrisy, hypocrisy. Liars. Grab hold of the Quran and see the definition of the Quran, what the Quran tells us. So what do we need? Muhabbat, love. Where will you get love from? <coughs> Go to that person, Allah says, who already loves me. Who already loves me. And he will drag you into that path of love. Soon as you do go to the company of the person who already loves Allah, then the, the style, lifestyle of the Prophet will come to you. Imam will come in your head. Face you will be adorned with the beard. And you'll start to regret and shake when you consume haram. And your akhlaq, your manners, your conduct will increase and get better. The lifestyle of the Prophet Through which ibadah? Through love this all will come. Love. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, because we are lacking love, so then we don't have love for the Prophet ﷺ, we are lacking the love of Allah. When we are lacking the love of Allah, then the Qur'an will start to read incorrectly. And akhlaq will be spoilt. And the conduct will be spoiled. The whole deen is spoiled. And here was something else, in Pakistan was something else, in Makkah was something else, in Medina was something else. Everywhere we go, our color and our style changes. System changes in the plane was something else, and on the earth was something else. Allahu Akbar. You don't understand what I'm saying? So this is the... So I just recited one verse. What was that verse? إِلَّا لَذِينَ صَبَرُوا مُعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ أُولَيْكَ لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ عَجْرٌ عَظِيمٌ Subhanallah. Ajr, you will get reward. You will get Jannah, paradise. Just all you have to do is what? That within your life, develop sabr. Sabr. And to get sabr, the tariqah, the method, is to acquire love. And to get love, you have to go to the company of a person who already has the love. So where do we start then from? That seek a wali Allah, sheikh, a friend of Allah, find one, look for him, search with a pious and sincere intention go to his company with one intention oh Allah 
My intention is that I want to acquire the path for your love. I want your love to come into me, Allah. So that when your love comes into me, Allah, then the whole deen, whenever love comes, then the whole deen will come into me. That's it. وَآخْرُ دَوَانَ أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ May Allah Ta'ala give us the tawfiq, all of us to practice this. Ameen, recite the Rosh